Hey everyone, welcome to the industry show. I'm your host Nitin Bajaj, and joining me today is Niru Khosla. Niru, welcome on the show. Thank you so much for having me, Nitin. Um, it's going to be fun. Pleasure is all ours, and really looking forward to this. So, tell us who's Niru. Who? <laughs> Who is Niru? Is uh, kind of a difficult uh, thing to define because. I keep changing, or I think I keep changing mm -hmm. as, you know, I'm 65 years old. And I remember who I was as a little one, little girl. I was remember what I was in, uh, you know, elementary school versus high school, college, and now here. So I think I'm someone who redefines myself constantly. Yes. I may look the same externally, of course, older, but that's a different issue. Uh, but I'm a caring and very empathetic person, and I'm very hungry to learn. Mm -hmm. I learn everything I can, always trying to figure out what I don't know. That's that. That's me. I think that curiosity and and the questions you ask really defines you and shapes you, and that's the best place to be in. Right. Right. And hopefully we kind of help our children, we have four children, mm -hmm. do the same. And pretty much they do. That's how they live too. That's beautiful. Tell us what is CK12? Well, CK12 is basically the result of my life, my children's life, the difference in what I received and we were in England when I was 10 years old. And, uh, and then uh, I went back, we went back to India. So for us, that diff that experience was quite life changing. Mm -hmm. And then I came here and had four children. And so CK12 is really the result of all those things culminating uh, it's it's a place where I believe I believe every child, any child actually, that we don't take care and is is left out of the education, the access, and you know uh, the ability to learn, is criminal. Mm -hmm. We need to take care of all children. So CK12 is my attempt to do that, to make sure every child can get uh, a. a quality education, at least starting with quality content. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we've been trying to build. And to how do you scale it? I mean, schools are usually small, you know, you can only impact so many pe people. Public education was supposed to be scalable. Yes. But it's kind of come to its, you know, the S curve, it's kind of reached its mm -hmm. potential, the maximum now people are starting to fail in, in that system. So we have to reimagine that system. So CK12 is taking that system and continuing to, uh, you know, kind of really figuring out how children learn mm -hmm. and giving them that opportunity wherever they might be. So it is the digitization, it is right. the digital version of what edu ed happens in education in a static classroom. Uh, and it's about helping the teacher. Right. We can help be assistant to the teacher because teachers can't in the moment kind of figure out what the student needs and need to think about things. So we can be there, Digit uh, computers and uh, you know mm -hmm. machine learning and all these things can be there to help the teacher. That's exactly what we are trying to do. And uh, we started with teachers. Mm -hmm. Because we believed, especially for K-12, most kids don't know what to do next. Mm -hmm. So we had to build something that, you know, with the knowledge pathways, how things relate to each other, math to math, science to science, and the interdisciplinary connection of all that. And so we built those that platform and that system. Uh, and, you know, we built it with teachers. Now we're building it with the machine learning and AI and kind of coming up with that solution. So the ideal customer really is a student, but 
K-12 young kids needs an adult mentor. Yes. So the teacher is always in the loop. Right. Makes sense. Give us a, give us a sense of the size and scale. You know, you talked about impact at uh, in amplifying what the school system has not been able to scale to. Yeah. So let, let me, you know, the, since we started in 2007, mm-hmm. we had to reimagine what a textbook material, what would the student really need? Because they don't even have textbook, particularly in the US. I mean, I, you know, uh, I went to India and uh, Dr. Kalam, the president at that point, told me in 1993 or something like that. And he told me, um, you know, we, we apply, we give content to our students, it's pennies. But in the US, it's billions of dollars. Yes. And it's it's kind of, it's unheard of. I, I, I was proud, quite disappointed. So um, when we started, we were building this thing and K-12 schools didn't have computers or even broadband, right? Yeah. So we started with, we said, okay, we'll be patient. We'll look at it like a long-term project. And we started this the project with, um, you know, waiting to see what happens. And, and we kind of, by 2012, classrooms started getting computer devices and broad, broadband, and yet the teachers weren't, you know, trained on how to use it. So we started, you know, providing the training for the teachers to be able to, uh, you know, use the stuff. So, but that time, our usage was very, very little, almost a little like flatline. Now we could have given up and said, hey, no. Long-term thinking got us to, okay, we'll keep building this, making it better and better and better. From 2015 or so, we started growing 30% a year. Mm. Last year, we had 40 million users. Wow. Okay. It's a phenomenon. But the thing is, since we are free, people kind of, ask the question, but can free be quality? Right. That's a commitment. Yes. Right. So, um, you know, it was when I gave my kids this education, I was a molecular biologist by trade. And before I had my kids, when I got, uh, I was doing research at Stanford on oncogenes. And I kind of said, when I got pregnant with my first child, I said, no, on you know radioactivity, yeah. you know pregnancy, so there was no choice. Right. Uh, I dropped that and got into, um, you know, got into education, and I went back at the age of fifty to figure out to Stanford to get another degree in education to figure out, you know, what is what is the issue with education, and that's when I started asking, uh, why can't we give quality content, uh, you know, uh, quality education to all children. Why do we just stop at memorization and think that we've given them all the tools they need to, you know, carry on? Yeah, that's really amazing. So just to get a sense for this, the 40 million students. Students and teachers. And teachers, this is all primarily in the US? No. 70%, 70%, 65 to 70% are in the US, okay. and the rest are in Philippines, India, okay. uh, other countries. Mexico's Spanish speaking countries are really starting to take off. Uh, so, yes, we even have CBSC content hmm. on our website. Um, one of the things we do believe in is not just providing one way of learning, whether it's video or text. We provide multimodality. We have interactives. We have uh, uh, adaptive pro- uh, practice, which we built over the years. Mm-hmm. And uh, the adaptive practice helps the student to kind of figure out. It helps us and the students to figure out uh, where they are yes. and what they're missing. We can give them that information. And... Those are some amazing numbers. And how many languages is this content in? Well, we have English mostly. Right. Uh, we have Spanish, mm-hmm. and there are some other, you know, uh, countries. Chile is uh, done. Brazil's done some translation. Germans have done some translations, 
uh, Koreans have done some, you know, so it depends on, you know, part of it is that we ourselves did not start doing the translations. We said anyone who wants to help us can help us. We can, we have the content, we can help you. We have the templates. So anybody who's interested in different languages, mm -hmm. we can work with you to make that available. Right. I remember back in the day when TED launched, they had a similar approach. Yeah. They started primarily with English and then volunteers stepped up yeah. and started doing translation. It's very hard to do different languages. Yes. We were hoping Google Translate would get better and better, but it's all right, but it still doesn't pick up the, true. the you know, the emotion. Yes, yeah. so true. Yeah. So as we are talking about this, this, you know, magnanimity of, of the challenge that uh, you're looking at, I want to pose the question instead of just trying to assume, what is the biggest challenge you're facing well, there are, I would say there are probably uh, three big challenges. The first biggest challenge is the mindset. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about mindset, fixed mindset or anything. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's very hard to change people's mindset out of the old system. Yes. To bring it into the new system. Yes. Right. And if you're going to operate on the old system, mm -hmm. you're always going to stay in that old mindset. And you're going to try to bring everything to your, to your mindset, to the way you think that it should be, right? When tools change, if those tools, if you don't take avail of those new capabilities, yeah. you're never going to advance. You're going to stay where you are. So the number one th issues is really getting the teachers to see what's capable. Because if you're thinking about assessment in standardized ways, that assessment is always going to measure right. from where it started. Mm -hmm. So that's the number one. How do I use this? What, what information can I get? And how, you know, so that's a long-term thinking to change that mindset. Number two mindset is always political, right? regulation, the rule and K-12 in particular, are, it's a very difficult thing to go. I mean, I, I kind of cringe when I think about a young kid coming to our website, we're a nonprofit mm -hmm. and we don't, you know, kind of monetize or nothing. We are free for everything. So we tried, I think about this young kid, under 13 kid who's gango about learning, comes to our site and go, stop. You know, time up. You can't learn here, right? Unless you go get your parents' permission. I understand privacy. We're committed to that. Yes. We sign with any district, any state, any whatever to make that happen. But it's just unbelievable to me that a student who's eager to learn, we're saying no to. We're building these walls Yes. under the pretext of a lot of the other things yes and not allowing them to get to feed their curiosity yeah and, and the third thing is that you know it has to do with the system you know system thinking which is this thing if it's free can't be quality how is it going to sustain itself mm -hmm. that was the first question i would get when i was when i started this when i presented well is this thing going to be around well publishers aren't around either right they're all getting this time when publishers were going under and it's very hard to maintain even a for profit model on this and access to education should be a human right. Right. We should all be committed to that because without that, you know, imagine the questions you were taught, we were talking about earlier, yes. you know, am I going to get COVID if I sneeze or am I going to get, you know, all those different yes. uh, things that we can't believe. If you don't have education, if you cannot even take part mm -hmm. in the economy, you know, the world of economy, how are you going to sustain? You're going to not have that chance. We've got to give that chance to all students. Doesn't matter. Free doesn't matter. It's garbage. Yes. Right. Even the car, you know, the content that publishers are providing had hundreds of thousands of mistakes. 
So, uh, and we keep getting better because we fix our mistakes. Great. And we can personalize to each kid. That's the kind of work that we can do that can help in getting the students what they really need. Mm -hmm. And we are working on all that. Um, so it, it, it's just these, these things become pretty monumental when they are, you know, and, and the constant change that also happens. Can I trust this? Is the standards changing? It's, you know, it doesn't happen too much in India, mm -hmm. but, you know, I mean, in India and in, you know, most of Asian countries, parents believe that education is the number one tool we can give our children. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we all got it. Yes. My parents, he was, my dad was an accounts officer. His, most of his money went towards getting us a good education. And I think it makes a difference. Yes. It does make a difference. So challenges are, you know, these are system challenges. These are mindset challenges mm -hmm. and moving from the old to new. Right. You know, it's always a challenge. So true. Let me look at the other side, the bright side. Right? The, I, th I believe the more challenging something, the bigger the opportunity. Right? Uh, what is that opportunity you are targeting? So the opportunity right now is, so a few years back, if you had asked me where CK12 going, I would have never been able to tell you, well, we are going to be doing this, right. which means because technology is moving so fast, we don't even know what tools we are going to be able to count on tomorrow or a year from today or mm -hmm. two or five. So we are wait we keep waiting and seeing and seeing. So we started with digitized content, mm -hmm. the customizable uh, nature, the, the ability to customize it to your needs and you know adaptiveness, interactiveness, uh, simulations, you have great simulations for physics and chemistry, working on biology, it, you know, get there sometime. And, you know, to really understand how things visually change. Um, so a few years back, I would have never said that we could be able to use machine learning or uh, artificial intelligence in ways. Today, we are developing an AI tutor. And we've done a lot of work on that, particularly in science, and it's on our website. It's called Flexi, mm -hmm. and it can interact with the students and help them with whatever questions they have. And the questions that we get from these students are incredible. You know, can imagine. that's what we should be teaching to. They, what are they curious about? Not just jamming down. I mean, there has to be some level of uh, sure. you know, continuous learning, right. but, you know, we also have to take into account, can they, through their passion, can through they, through their curiosity, learn things exactly, learn to write, learn to communicate, learn to compute, learn to, uh, you know, numeracy, literacy, all that, and we can do that. We can do yeah, that. I think the, there are some foundational aspects that yes. we need to provide. Yes. But then once we've given that, we need to let them find their own path. Right? Absolutely. And and that's what we do. We started with foundation. K-12 is foundational. But at what point does it become beyond foundational, even in K-12? Right. How does that continuum, you know, at some point I'm, I want to do the continuum. And we avoid going towards that. The, the tutor to help in whatever they need. The teachers will always be in the loop, mm -hmm. okay? Because the machines aren't going to get where we need them to be to be completely independent. They need humans always, yes. and so, um, yeah. It's really exciting. Yeah, it's we got big plans. So I don't exactly know, but you know, whatever we can make available of avail of as, as, as technology changes, mm -hmm. we incorporate it. Yes. Yeah. That's the best approach, right? It is the best approach. We adapt, we keep yeah. an eye on moving forward in the right direction. That's right. And we take advantage of the resources that are available at that point. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's exactly what we do. 
and continue and will continue to do. Niru, in terms of you know the journey so far, it's been about 14 years or so, and it could also include some of your other experiences. Is there a, a lesson learned or a success story that uh, you're proud of that you would like to share? You know, I am not, I was not a technologist, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's something that I would never even have thought that I would dare to even, you know, be involved in. Right. I'll tell you something. When we got married, my husband said, hey, uh, we just, uh, you know, came here maybe a few years. It's, so he was like, do you want to try this? And I would say, sure, because he, he said you can do it. And so he said, hey, would you like to try jumping out of a plane in a parachute? <laughs> Oh my God, there was a program that trained you for, you know, for a weekend and then it culminated in, in you going up, you know, tens of thousands of and feet. And going from and, a simulation to, to the real thing. Yeah, no, you practice. It wasn't even a simulation. You actually practice jumping and falling. So we go up there and I'm sitting on the side of the plane of it all dressed up with the, you know, with the parachute and yep. stuff. And I looked down when it was my turn. And my husband sat behind me and, you know, I'm going, I swear to God, even to this day, I believe someone pushed me off that plane. <laughs> <laughs> Terrified. <laughs> okay. that, uh, and, and, and once the shoot opened, it was the most amazing thing, yes. right? Yes. Similarly, when I started this, you know, we started thinking about trying CK12, my co-founder, Morgan Powell, had mm -hmm. just finished um, building a company. Kleiner Perkin funded him for $150 million. So, you know, we not said, why don't you talk to him? He'll be quite uh, good to do this and he can run this and do it. So I went to talk to him and Morgan said, I'll do this as a technologist, but only with you. Nice. Now that was my parachute moment. Because I don't know about technology. Yes. I've been living in fear of failure. And it just keeps stopping me because every time I don't let jump off that plane, I I don't think about what I can do, you know, what I cannot do. Every time, even whitewater rafting, you know, say, let's go white Zambezi. I mean, it's the biggest rapids and all that. And there I am sitting. I don't even like to swim too much, you know. <laughs> so I, I think it just helped me kind of, but the fear of fear is the worst thing that can you can let stop you and you don't even know what you're capable of. So it true. still surfaces. It still surfaces all the time. It doesn't go away. But then every time you let go, you feel amazed. And that's a very insightful thing. I, I would imagine, you know, not that I've given it too much thought before, but one would think that once you have overcome the fear, you've overcome it in general terms. But that's not really true, right? At each, at each point, at each step, we go back to you know, I guess the the small brain yes. kicks in. Yes. And it, it's it's like the situation and the environment, the situation, the rules, the, you know, the hurdles change. Yes. And each one of those hurdles and each one of those things kind of go, well, I don't know that. Well, you know, how am I going to do this? So you have to go back to square one. Yes. It starts with fear. Do I really want to do that? And COVID actually, yes. not only me, COVID's brought this up to so many people. I was reading a report that 48% of tech, uh, you know, workers are thinking about changing their jobs or are changing their jobs. Yes. I think it was a McKenzie report. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's un, 
unbelievable to me that I mean, all of these, all of us, you know, kind of think about, well, once I'm overcome fear, you overcome that fear for that. Yes. Right. Things change. You're going to, I don't know. That's me. That's how I, you know, my son goes, mom, you've got 40 million users. People would kill to get that kind of. Yes. But I just don't, I still don't know what if I, if I fail. As so, long as you use it for, you know, motivation and for the right things, it's, it's good to have. But like you said, you know, sometimes it does stop us from achieving our potential. And it always stops us from. Yes. Wasn't it Michael Jordan who said, mm -hmm. for every shot I don't take yes I miss yes right so true well it does set us up for the next section which is the one line life lessons but I am curious about you said you believe someone pushed you did you ever find out if someone did push you <laughs> because you know when you're sitting on this the side of the plane you see the pe person who's gone before you and all you see is this frightened face with that, yes. you know? And you're going, oh, shit, what the heck, right? Am what I did I sign up for? <laughs> well, actually, then later I thought about it. You're, um, you're, as you fall, you're trained to count out, count out loud, yes. 101, 102, so you can tell the time before mm -hmm. the shoot opens. But when I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, oh, it's <laughs> not. By the way, I banned my husband from parachuting ever again. <laughs> After we had kids, I said, no, you're not doing that. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> okay, so one line life lessons. Uh, I think the number one thing that I live by, actually it came to me because my mother mm -hmm. at the age of 50 something, decided to learn to drive in India. Wow. Okay. But of course she learned, but she never really continued it. But you know, sure. and somehow I found that really age is no barrier. Mm -hmm. You know, when I went back to school to learn at the age of 50, yes. I was so dumb because everyone around me at Stanford, those, those students are, you know, just, really smart mm -hmm. and I had been out of college for a long time yeah. but I'm telling you age is no barrier that's the thing you that's you let yourself stop yes now, there are certain things physical things that you may not be able to do at you know certain ages but people old people are running marathon people old people are doing all kind of things mm -hmm. It's just a matter of your mindset right there. True. Very true. Um, and I also realize life is long, but it goes by really fast. That is so beautiful. Right? It really does go back. And I think about, I look at myself and I go, 65? <laughs> but, 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 that was, I was, you know, just yesterday. So true. Right? Yes. Um, I, I think, you know, I, I said something about fear. Mm -hmm. Fear is uh, really, fear of fear is really what gets in the way. Yes. Right? We really do have to get past that. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, you know, because I've seen many changes in our, in the, from our life where I came from a very, um, you know, very low middle class or middle class mm -hmm. uh, family. And then we went to England and saw a completely different side of the world and came back and got really good education, got to you know, uh, that there is, we saw the world, we saw you know, all kinds of things. 
So one another thing about life is that life is not a single story. Yes. Right. It hinges on many complex stories. The com com culmination or coming together of all these, and if you can, if you can, remember those and reflect on them. Reflection is another big thing. Yes. Without that, you know, it's not going to change. Yeah. You're going to keep applying the old rules to your new life. And you're yes. not going to get any better. Yeah. You'll be in that loop. Yes. Um, I I don't know if I gave you enough. These are some amazing. And what we love about these one line life lessons is, it, they're very simple, but they're profound. Yeah. And someone who adopts some of these or one of these, it is life changing. Yes. Reflection, you know, it's yeah. it's just one word. But if you're not doing that, you just rinse and repeat. Right? You're just expecting that this time around in this movie, the train is going to have a different outcome, but it's not. Mm. It's just like you keep applying what you know from the old rules to. So when you think about the life we had in india and we apply the same life rules in the u in I mean, london or the us or wherever right you have to keep reinventing yourself mm -hmm. reinvention yeah. is really really key the one thing you said about the mindset right you can't apply the you can't have a one of those really old school automobiles and expect that to run like a you know, something that's built in 22. Yeah. Uh, it's not going to work. I was reading uh, this book about inventions and there was a picture, a very old picture. It was about a steam engine mm -hmm. and it had buggies mm -hmm. behind it, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so the people who could pay more got to sit in the buggies. Yes. People who wanted cheap tickets got to sit on top of the oh. buggies, right? <laughs> And so these were coal, this was a coal mm -hmm. buggy. So the coal, I mean, the smoke from so, there would come yeah. to all over these kids. I mean, all the people sitting on top. Yes. And, and that is how world changes, you know, kind of, that was painful. Yes. So you knew you had to fix that, right? So invention has really been the necessities of humans needs True. or I think I'm getting my words mixed up, but anyways. Was, um, I think it says necessity is the mother of invention. Mother of all inventions. Yes. Yeah. So, and it's true, right? Even today, the invention, and we're always afraid of new. Always afraid of the new. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. change is not easy. But then also at the same time, you know, going back to what you were saying, if COVID had happened, 10 yeah. years ago, it would have been so much more painful without the technology, without yeah. the ability to access school or programs online, right? We, yeah, we, I mean, actually, I, I, which brings me to another one. I mean, when yeah. we started, I used to say, hey, if we're gonna move, move everything on to computers, yes. what happens if the electricity goes? <laughs> How, what are we gonna do? But I never thought, that I would be asking the question, or we'd be asking the question, what happens if there are no schools? Yes. What are we going to do then? And and sure enough, the unseen, unknown can become, you know, um, a reality. Yeah. Yes. Right? Here we are struggling with it. And what are we doing? We probably would have had this interview in person. Yeah. Right? Which, by the way, would have been great. I know. <laughs> I'm I'm dying for real human. Yes. You know, uh, kind of yeah. But yeah, hopefully it looks like we're getting there, right? Things are yeah getting better, and uh, yeah. I was I was amazed that we could create it, it. Everyone is that we could create these vaccinations so soon. Yes. And on top of that, we use the same mRNA technology to mm -hmm. finally come up with malaria vaccine. Yes. Right. Which um, we've tried for years, to, I mean, decades to try and eliminate. But, you know, we had oral medicine only. 
but now it's going to be exciting to see uh, maybe we'll get rid of malaria too in that same but other things will come up sure but you know one thing this reaffirms is when we are put to a test when we are pushed in a corner yeah. we have no choice but to fight back and, and right. come back, come back stronger yes yes and that's exactly that's when innovation happens at the edge right and yes. it's those edges that push us yes sometimes we take the wrong paths uh, but you know that's experimentation yeah. it is about experimenting reflecting and re revising the, right? i think we have to balance the winning with the learning yes. <laughs> yeah it's uh, i don't know it's been uh, from what i remember where we were you know when we've gone through our lives and we kind of look back and look at where we are today it is pretty amazing yes pretty amazing now we can fill plan planes full of oxygen tanks mm -hmm. and fly them across to india true never would have thought that you know it's just like okay we got to do something so my husband said oh, what can we do i said you know you figure it out mm -hmm. and here we are shipping plane worth full of um, oxygen tanks just phenomenal phenomenal and, and and we have people who can help you know make that change in india so true we're all coming together we are in that position where we can make a difference mm -hmm. in our own country so it, it's it's actually very um it's a very proud moment for all of us yes you know and yeah, thank yeah. you once again for you know for doing this because I know you said when you can make a difference, but the key is you are making a difference, right? A lot of other people can and for, for you know, valid reasons or whatever drives them, they don't, right? Yeah. Or they're unable to. But the fact is when you can, you must. And you well, are... You can't judge people. They have their own reasons for whatever reason. Fear of fear. You are helping, right? And That's right. I said, the great thing is you are helping and you're making a difference. And th that's amazing. I hope you're making a difference. Oh, you are. You know that. <laughs> we'll see. Well, thank you so much for having me on the show. Thank you so much, Nero. It was a great pleasure to have you and uh, would love to have a follow up on this, hopefully in person pretty soon. Sure. Let me know. Thank you so much. Thank you.